I'm one of the co-chairs along with Dimitri and Tobias. This is a collaborative working group that's both under the CCG at the W3C and the Decentralized Identity Foundation. Um, and we're focused on getting a specification for secure data storage, which is encrypted data storage for both individuals, but also entities. I will let, uh, hand it over to Ori to give a description of the work. Awesome. Um, so some background for the group. There was a concept which uh, Daniel Buckner had um, been working on a, a while ago. I think he would, he would say he started working on it like back when he was working at Mozilla and it was about, you know, how can I secure my personal data? How can I control access to uh, and grant access to personal data? Um, and that work evolved under the branding of identity hubs and personal data stores. Um, and there was some specifications at DIFF. And at one point there was a uh, DIFF uh, sort of implementation around that. And then in parallel, there was uh, within the rebooting web of trust and W3C CCG communities, there was work on aligning IPFS and Solid and Tahoe LFS and a number of other technologies for encrypting data and um, granting access to encrypted data. And that work became branded as Encrypted Data Vaults and was uh, funded in part um, by the Department of Homeland Security um, Silicon Valley Innovation Program as a potential solution to storing sensitive trade documents and other uh, trade-related material associated with decentralized identifiers. Um, and so, as Kalia mentioned, um, one of the biggest wins that um, the community has had uh, in re recent times is the W3C, CCG, and DIFF coming together under the Secure Data Store Working Group to develop a joint specification that covers both the encrypted data vaults concepts and the identity hubs concepts. Um, and so if you heard confusion over in the naming, it's because we're still working out that part. Um, but the good news is that there's a lively discussion and we're sorting out uh, the layers of each of these technologies and how they build on top of each other and how they relate to other standards. Um, and uh, it's a very active uh, community um, and ongoing work. And uh, I think that's probably enough of a summary. Kalia, would you like to give a little bit of a status update on how how far the the group is and in, in towards that spec? When any group starts orientating and understanding, um, developing shared language and shared understanding through through the group has been is a focus, and we have a stack. There is a this diagram of sort of dividing the universe that we're focused on into some layers. There's broad agreement about these these different layers and we're proceeding to sort of the next step for the group is to dive into layer A and to agree on what lives there. Kalia, without prescribing my view, may I talk about amazing things I think people should be able to do with this thing that we could possibly have in the future? Could I talk just uh, with like use cases? Amazing fun sure. use cases. Go, okay. go ahead. So my hope is that at the end of all this, we'll have a data store. Um, I don't know how familiar people are with web APIs, but um, there's like a web API called IndexedDB. It allows you to do storage basically on the client. Uh, for websites and you can store lots of data, hundreds of megabytes, whatever you want. Um, it was great for developers, right? Before that, we only had local storage, which was like five megabytes in some browsers and it was, you know, not very, not very good. Um, but we got an IndexedDB and that, that made a lot of app situations possible, right? Um, but it, it still isn't a data store that carries with you, right? Like it's something just for that site and that domain and, you know, other domains can't use it. So if I was running Spotify on my uh, app, you know, on my phone, and it stored some data as the web app, <clears throat> it wouldn't synchronize to, you know, even the other, other Spotify app on my desktop uh, machine, for instance, let alone if I used, say, Spotify on my phone, and then maybe Groove on my desktop, laptop. Um, and, and that's, that's sad, because, you know, people 
might have playlists that they create for music and they don't really want to go recreate that playlist or drag files around between devices. That's, that's a pain in the ass, right? So um, I hope what we get in the end is the ability to have a personal data store, um, you know, data store based on this, that when I grant an application like Spotify access to this personal data store, maybe they can start storing my um, music playlist files in a common place. And I might even give a different application on a different device uh, that I like for music in that ecosystem um, access to that same data. And you can imagine if applications were able to store via an, an, you know, an API that they didn't have to know where the storage was or who the provider the person picked, it was all standardized and could work off the same data, right? Song apps all working off the same corpus. You never have to go, you're basically working on one set of data that belongs to you. Um, and you can allow people in to see it or use it or, you know, visualize it for you in whatever ways you want. And that can be whether it's, you know, song apps or it's, you know, your personal pictures or tweets you want to share with the world. Um, if everyone kind of reimagined apps around, you know, visualization of data that was lived with people, I think that's, that might be one high level end goal of our work in SDS. Thanks, Dan.